Hello and good evening. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Walter. Thank you for uh, tuning in to tonight's uh, midweek Bible study. As uh, you know, we have a, uh, an impending storm and hazardous conditions uh, that are mounting. So for this, we decided to pre-record the service so we could have the, the study. Um, we still have our Bible study tonight. Uh, pastor is uh, home and I'm filling in because I'm right here uh, and um, I don't have to drive in. Uh, so uh, tonight, our Bible study tonight is out of Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah is uh, uh, one of the major prophets in the Bible. Uh, the book is in many times compared to the Bible as a whole. The Bible has 66 books and so does uh, and so Isaiah has 66 chapters. The Bible is also divided into the New and the Old Testament. And Isaiah can also be divided into two parts as well. So, and there are other ways that the book of Isaiah can be compared very easily to the Bible. Um, but tonight we're going to, instead of go through the entire book of Isaiah, we're not going to do that. We're going to go through Isaiah chapter 6. I'm going to start, I'm going to go ahead and read through that chapter uh, real quick. So, uh, starting in verse 1, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a, pe of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and tell his people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of his pe this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man. And the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord hath removed men from far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a till tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Let's pray. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day and for the night and for allowing me the opportunity to come and to preach your word. Uh, thank you for the message that you've given me uh, to share to others, dear Lord. And uh, thank you for the technology that we have that we can do this. We can use this and, and the, the platform that we can use to, to share this message. I uh, pray that you'll keep keep us all safe as we are abroad, dear Lord, uh, as we move around. Keep us uh, our community safe, dear Lord, and I pray you'll help us to gather uh, together again at the next appointed time, dear Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you once again for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this, this chapter in Isaiah starts with, in verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died. Now, King Uzziah was... Uh, one of the great kings. He, he was one of the good kings of Israel. He was a king that he, he ruled for uh, 55 years. Now we don't. Now Israel had many different kings. They had good kings and bad kings. The bad kings did not last that long. God would usually take them out. 
And Uzziah was a good king. We know that because he was, he was a ruler for so long. Uh, so and such, someone, imagine having a ruler for someone, a leader, a national leader, for over 55 years, and all of a sudden he's gone, he's dead. We're going to have to mourn his loss. So that was a time of great mourning for a lot of people. Right now, we, our, our country, we, we have a, a change in leadership every four to eight years, depending on the election. So it's not that big a deal for us as it was for Israel. They had a leader for 55 years. And now there is going to be a change. There's a change of guard. We don't know. They don't know what's going to happen, what the next person is going to do. There's a lot of uncertainty now in our country. What's the next president going to do? Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, so imagine this. Uh, they, they're going through the same thing. And they're really not sure about it. For, for many people, anyone under 55 at least, they've never experienced this before in their lifetime. So they're, that's like with us. <laughs> We've never experienced a major pandemic in our lifetime. Now that, that doesn't happen as often as a change in leadership happened um, for kings, for most of Israel's kings. But you see a lot of things, this is something that's never happened for many people. And there is a grieving period uh, and a lot of uncertainty. So through this, Isaiah sees a vision. He sees a Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. He sees a vision. He sees God on a throne. He's high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That's where exactly where God is. He is high and lifted up. His train, the Bible says, and his train filled the temple. The train is the, the part of their clothing, their cape, it's what drags the ground behind them. That's the train. Uh, a, a bride in a wedding has a train. A lot of kings would have their cloak and they'd have a train behind them. Uh, I've seen, I recently saw a part of the uh, Queen Elizabeth, the wedding from Queen Elizabeth, the Princess Elizabeth at the time. Uh, she had a very long train. There's uh, other royal weddings, they have long trains. This the Lord, it says his train filled the temple. That tells us how important he was. There is no, no one higher than our God and our Lord. He is above all. Uh, verse 2 says, Above us stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy. The, is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. He said, holy, holy, holy. I'm not saying it as loud as he did, but you know he said it loud because in verse 4 we see, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. That's pretty loud. If you think, the closest thing I can think of to match that would be when the person drives down the street and he's got his radio blasting so loud that it makes, that it shakes the house or shakes the windows. Well, shake the door frame, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty intense. The door frame is usually a very sturdy part of the building. In California, they used to say when there's an earthquake, you stand in a door frame because it would be a more secure part of the building. They don't really say that anymore. They don't build houses like they used to, I guess. But the door frame is something that's pretty sturdy. The door frame moved. The post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. Usually the door post was something that was very heavy and immovable, solid object. It's, it's stout and it moved because it cried so loud. And the house was filled with smoke. That tells you how it, how much the seraphim meant it, how, how important it was. You're going to know, let everyone know, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. He is holy above all. He is holy above anything we could ever hope to obtain on our own. Verse 5, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. 
I am undone. You see that. You see the Lord, how high up he is. You see how low and insignificant we are. You'll be undone. Probably be scared, maybe. Frightened out of your mind. Uh, if you don't know God and you see him, like up there, and you see the seraphim that just said, holy, 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 and it just made the whole house shake, it made the door frame sh post shake. Um, the house is all full of smoke. You, you'd probably be frightened quite a bit. He said, woe is me, for I am undone. I think we would all agree with that statement if we were there um, in his shoes. It says, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He just realized how far away he was from the holiness of God. How many people we have in our neighborhood, in our community, in our world that think they're all right. We think they're pretty good. Uh, how, many, how many times does the world tell us everybody's a good person? We're all good people. Uh, I see it in the cartoons that my children watch. They say, oh, they're just, everybody is inherently good. No, they're not. Um, we are all people of unclean lips, and we dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. You see the Lord and you realize how bad we are. We're really, we're really, you see, you see us and we see everyone that's around us and compared to us on a horizontal level, we're doing pretty good. But when you look, compare us to God and his standards, we're really not. We are, as verse 5 says, undone. Verse 6, though, we see something else in verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, thy sin is purged. Now, praise God, aren't you glad he didn't say, you, lo, now you can complete all the sacraments and your sin will be purged. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> Praise God, he didn't say that. He didn't say, lo, now you pay your tithe and your sins will... No, he didn't say that. He says, this hath touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. Isaiah didn't have to do anything here. It was done for him. He didn't, go get the, he didn't go get the hot coal. He didn't go get the live coal and touch it to his mouth. The seraphim did. He didn't have to do all these things. It was done for him. If you accept God's salvation, you don't have to do anything for it. It's already been done for you. There's nothing you can do to work yourself to heaven. There's nothing, no matter what denomination or what priest or what they tell you you have to do to earn salvation, there is nothing you can do. The only thing that can be done to wash away your sins is already been done for you. That happened when Christ died on the cross. We just have to accept the gift. So, his sin was purged. He's a new man, right? He's on top of the world. Right? Verse 8 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Now this is a verse you'll see a lot. You'll, you might hear a lot of missionaries say this verse. You hear it long if you, you listen to a lot, uh, enough missionaries. They'll, they'll use this. This verse. Then said I, here my sin me. This is a, there's a song, a children's song that I learned when I was a, a, a wee little child. Uh, here my Lord send me. This was after I got saved. I wanted to go. I wanted to serve God. He, he, he gave me life. I was dead. But then he saved me. He did. He pur purged my sin. And I had a lot of sin when I was a kid. Um, I'll tell you that. And we all do. 
if we're honest with ourselves. Um, who, here am I, send me. He said, I'll do it. Did he do it so he didn't, he didn't say that so he could be saved. Did he say that so his sin would be purged? No. His sin was already purged. Nope. He did that because his sin had been purged. Because, since now he's a clean man, he's, he's not undone, as in verse 5. Undone. His sin was purged. And then, and here am I, send me. In verse 8. Moving forward, in verse 9. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. God tells him, Go and tell your people. Go and tell this people. Hear ye indeed, and understand not. And see ye indeed, but understand, but perceive not. You tell people things that they're not, that may, that they're not going to understand. Isaiah, he saw a vision. He saw how low he was. But most people, when you tell people today that they're a dirty, rotten, filthy sinner, most, in a lot of places, that could be fighting words. I know down south, it's just insinuating that somebody might not have a church to go to in some areas uh, will get you in trouble. You, you want to go invite somebody to church and they look at you cross like you just insulted them. What? How dare you insinuate I don't have a church to go to? Of course I know I'm saved. Oh yeah? You ask them how they know and then they get offended. How dare you ask me that? Well, usually someone's saved They'll be glad to tell you how they got saved. More than happy. I'll tell you how I got saved. <laughs> the best day of my life. Uh, and that's how it should be. Uh, so, verse back to verse 9. And he said, Go and tell his people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Verse 10 says, Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their e eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. He wants them to be converted. Isaiah was converted. He wants everybody to be converted. How do we know he wants everybody? Let's look at the next verse, verse 11. Isaiah says, this is Isaiah, he says, Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants. So how long should we tell others about Christ? How long should we tell others how to be saved? How long should we tell others how to be certain? How long? Until the cities be wasted without inhabitants, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Now, we have a lot of people in our city. And while it's not the... The city next to us, New York City, might be uh, a void of a lot less people. Might be have a lot less people, but there's still a lot of people there. There's still people here. There's still people all around us. Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, God wants everybody to know. Until as long as there are people that you can tell, we need to tell people how to be saved. We need to give the gospel to them. We need to share God's word. We have the track team. Now, you can tell someone how to get saved. You can tell them and praise God. We don't have to worry about Nero or, uh, or another person coming to kill us or execute us. We don't have to worry about ISIS. ISIS is not going to come get us and kill us because we tell someone about the gospel. Um, we don't have to worry about being executed for being a Christian. Um, we, we, we might be ridiculed or, or rejected. You know, rejection is a, is a big thing for, for many people, but God has not rejected us. God, if we're saved, we know that, that we have Christ. So we need to give the gospel. There's three ways we give the gospel. Well, there's many different, there's, there's different ways we can get the gospel. Um, but the track team 
has three different tracks that we're using. We have uh, a fresh start track. We have, which, which is like a postcard, but on the back of it, it's got a full gospel message. It tells you how you can be saved. Then we have an Are You Certain track. It's a track, it's a nice folded track. You can open it, read it like a book, and it'll tell you how you can be 100% certain that when you die, you will go to heaven. And then we have a This Is Your Life track, and it's a little pamphlet with a story in it. You can read, someone can read that. Not everybody's going to read all three of those. Uh, but you can give one of those out, and so, so, so someone turns it down. You try to give one away, someone turns it down and say, no, thank you. And you can say, okay, thank you very much. And you can give it to someone else who will not turn it away. And I'm grateful the ones that, for the ones that say no thank you. Because then I can take it and give it to somebody else. And there are people that will take it from me and they'll just throw it down throw it in the garbage. That's between them and the Lord. I did my part. We gave them the gospel. Better yet, if you can actually talk to them and, and have a conversation with them and say, hey... You can know 100% for certain. Do you know the Lord? They say, do you know where you're going to go when you die? We have the coronavirus where there's a lot more people dying of the coronavirus or the cause of it. A lot more people are afraid of death now than they used to be. So we have more opportunity, I think, to talk to people. But we should always be working to spread the gospel. So... Winners, warners. We need until the cities be wasted without inhabitants. Do we, do we need to stop once we re reach retirement age? No. Do we need to stop when uh, we're on our deathbed? How about then? No. Uh, I've known people that even on their deathbed, they told everyone they could about how to be saved as much as they could. I, I know a guy, uh, a wonderful old man, on his deathbed, he was still telling people, hey, do you know you're going to go to heaven when you die? Do you know how to know? Do you know how you can be 100% certain that when you die, you'll go to heaven? He told everyone he knows. He, he, could, he could. He could not leave his bed for nothing. But he told everyone he could. And I've known people that can't even speak real well, but yet they can still communicate. And tell people. And then give them the gospel. We can give someone a track. Even, even, even if you want to stay socially distanced. That magical six foot number. Uh, six foot distance. That's supposed to protect us. Um, if, you, if you want to keep that. You can leave it for somebody. And they'll, and they'll pick it up. And hopefully read it. And they might get saved. But if they don't, that's okay. You still planted the seed. You, get, you gave them the gospel. You told them. Then, verse 11, again, Then said I, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses of, without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land, and yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and it shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So we're going to tell everybody until there's no one left. That's what we need to do. We need to spread the gospel. And we have our track team. And we meet every Saturday. And we have breakfast. And we pray. And we take a different area. And we go... And we give out the tracts. We distribute the tracts. And hopefully people will take those. And they'll see them. They'll read them and get saved. Or maybe they'll see them and they'll put them down and they'll read them later. Or maybe they'll come to church and get saved. Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe they'll just throw it aside. Maybe someone else will pick it up and read it. Or maybe a few years down the road they might pick it up and read it. We never know. God knows. We're sowing and reaping. We sow the seed. And then later on we'll reap. And that's all we have for tonight. All I have for tonight. Uh, thank you for coming. Pray about this. Pray for our track team. Thank you for coming.
Thank you for watching. Pray for our track team. Let's pray uh, that we see souls saved, that we see baptisms. Pray for our community. Pray for a revival. If everyone here, if every member of our church were to see one person get saved, and that person gets saved and baptized and join the church, and then they did the same thing, we'd see a revival like we've, I haven't seen in my life. And that would be amazing. Life-changing, oh, yes, of course, for everyone involved. World-changing, there could be. God can do it. But we have to pray. We have to pray for revival. Pray for revival in our own hearts. That God will help us to see others the way he does. I pray that we will love everyone the way God loved us. That's what we're supposed to do. But sometimes we fall short when we are human. So pray for others. Pray for revival in our own heart that God will help us to grow closer to him whatever it takes. That is a very hard thing to pray. Whatever it takes, Lord, help us to grow closer to you. That might cause tragedy in your life. Sometimes it takes tragedy to bring us closer to Christ. Sometimes tragedy, it tr takes tragedy to help us to grow, to bring revival in our heart. But God's with us. When my daughter died, that was a great tragedy. But you know what? A lot of good came from it. And no matter how bad, there will always be good to come for it, from it. As long as we love God. That's their promise from God. That's why I might have I might have a lot of bad news. I might say things, and you might say, Oh, that's bad news. Don't tell me the bad news. But in my mind, I'm thinking, well, there's good news. Yeah, this might be bad, but there's good news in it somewhere. I'm happy no matter how bad the news. I'm always happy because I know something's good is going to come out of it. It always does. I've seen it. Uh, I've never seen and never suffered a tragedy that didn't have something good come from it eventually now we might have to wait you might have to wait months years for to see the good come out of a tragedy I've, I've waited years I've, I've, I've suffered a tragedy and waited years but we know but back to the point we need to pray for revival in our own hearts pray that we will love others the way Christ loved them that we'll We'll give them the gospel. We'll spread the word. See people saved. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Have a good night.